And let me tell you about the Higher Self Expo July 2021. It's a 24-hour event with 33 guest speakers who are sharing their wisdom and exploring the connection between science and spirituality. Today's guest is a guest speaker at this event. To register your place and find out more, go to www.higherselfexpo.com. Hey everyone, it's Louisa Tanner-Munson from Feel Good Astrology and I've got a Feel Good conversation that I think you're going to love. Um, this is one that's really close to my heart because I absolutely adore home- homeopathy and my guest today is a homeopath, but one with a really big difference. So my guest is um, a general practitioner and has had 40 years worth of general practice experience, i.e. as a doctor. Now, I've already interviewed my guest today, just so you know, um, and... I can tell you that his the way he marries the two of them together is really quite phenomenal. Um, I love it. Uh, I think it's really insightful and, and very inspiring. He is a speaker at the Higher Self Expo, which is taking place on the 17th and 18th of July 2021. Um, it, it, it's about where science meets spirituality. So again, my guest is a perfect mix of science and spirituality because home- homeopathy homeopathy has a um a very spiritual background and it's very much based on person-centered care it's very much led by the person um and the symptoms that they're experiencing and um you know he explains that general practice is very much about the diagnosis less so about the patient and what's going on for them but just the diagnosis what do what do the tests prove so this is going to be interesting so um we're going to be talking about his book as well uh, which is bodyguard which is already released in flemish and is soon to be released in in english so let's meet him I'm going to say we do just kind of jump right into this interview. So um, forgive me on that one. Um, we just literally started um, talking and then I hit record a little bit after. So uh, we are going to go straight into the interview. I'm going to bring him on now. His name is Leon Sheepers. I hope you enjoy this. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. And I, I read this book, and at that moment, I said to myself, "Leon, it's now or never. Okay. So you uh, you have to start to write now your book because your experience during your forty years of uh, general practitioner is so different from what you uh, did read uh, here." So I started. And it was at a Thursday afternoon in August 2019. Mm-hmm. And I started writing. And uh, yes, that uh, is the book Bodyguard. Uh, that will be uh, uh, the translation finished, uh, will be finished today or tomorrow. Wow, how exciting. The, the print will start uh, next Monday. And this book uh, tries really to... Yeah, to build a bridge between the conventional medicine and homeopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because that is exactly what I did practice uh, during 40 years in my uh, my clinic. Mm -hmm. Uh, So in our clinic, we are working now with four medical doctors. It's not uh, uh, a matter of uh, we are practicing or conventional medicine or homeopathic medicine. We are uh, practicing the the two of the both of them Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, but we try to start always with homeopathic medicine yeah the combination of the two is perfectly possible and uh, i I can give an example Uh, uh, a person uh, is on uh, uh, conventional medication for his hypertension but uh he he gets a flu or he gets a bronchitis and bronchitis uh, 39 uh, celsius fever celsius and uh, uh, antibiotics are uh, administered mm-hmm. but in our case even when this person is taking his uh, conventional drugs we can treat him with homeopathy on the acute symptoms of the bronchitis so yeah. it's it's a win-win situation so it's it's not uh when you are practicing homeopathy as a medical doctor that you are a homeopath they call you a homeopath and it's, 
a little bit uh, well, a homeopath, you understand? No, well, rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> rubbish. Yeah. Uh, you away with the rubbish, but uh, no, it's uh, it's a combination, and that is uh, where bodyguard is uh, is going about. Mm. Uh, it's explaining from an historic point of view uh, why the homeopathic medicine now is so much under oppression and it's a long history and uh, it, it started uh, at the end of the 19th century really uh, and uh, it started in in the in the usa at that moment uh, and uh, yes uh, i all, all explained it in in my book and even at that moment there were a lot of um, uh, MDs uh, only working in conventional medicine, not at all uh, qualified as an homeopath. Mm. They uh, were very worried about the evolution in medicine in, in the USA. Yeah. And, uh, well, there are quite a lot of quotations of these people, of these people in uh, bodyguard. Mm. And so, uh, yeah. It's, it's, I think it's interesting to read. It's uh, always said, know your history. It's yeah, very important to, to know your history. And that's yeah. what I tried to explain in Bodyguard. Yes. I think that's fantastic because I think there's a lot that we don't know about medicine and how it, how it's arrived. I've got um, a couple of books um, behind me, in fact. Um, Because I, I love reading things. Um, and I've got this one here. Hang on. Other side. Yeah. What, what really makes you ill? Why everything you thought you knew about disease is wrong. And I think this is exploring the idea of germ theory versus um, terrain theory. Like, is yeah. it our environment that makes us ill? Or is it actually um, germs, bacteria, viruses, etc.? Yeah. Um, I'm very I'm very grateful to homeopathy. Um my mum took me to one when I was about 14 or 15. Um, for, for a, 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 it, it was almost to, to help me understand my journey, you know, in my body um, as a young woman. Um, and the, the way I was listened to and treated um, with just one single tablet, the cure came about pretty much through the actual consultation itself. And then I had a big break and used medical, um, you know, mainstream medicine for the next 15, 20 years. And I just got really, really sick, <laughs> continuously sick. Um, and then um, I met uh, a homeopath who's now like my family homeopath. I've, I've been using him for about 10 years and we've never actually seen a doctor since. Um, uh, you know, apart from one time when my little daughter, she, she was two and she got Lyme's disease or, you know, she got the, the rash. And I, I took her to um, my homeopath and also to a doctor and she was treated with antibiotics and that, and she's had no recurrence. And so I'm really grateful for it. And what I like about it is it seems very um, unobtrusive. It, it doesn't insert itself, you know, like homeopathy is very gentle and subtle and, and my experience of mainstream medicine is let's cut it off. <laughs> it's, it's very much the person. Yeah. The, the most of the uh, type of medication in the, in the mainstream uh, medicine are called anti. You have antibiotics, yeah. you have antibiotics, you have anti, etc. Uh, mm. So it's always suppressing. And mm. that is what I uh, should like to explain also during the conference that uh, it all starts with uh, spirituality, and yeah. then, uh, we we have to think about what is uh, spirituality. I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I I I start with this uh, topic because the the uh, title of the conference is uh, uh, where spirituality, spirituality. Yeah. and I should uh, uh, mention my my uh, conference uh, from spirit from spirituality to science mm -hmm. and I will explain a little bit because we all we all are spiritual it all yes. starts in the mind and it doesn't matter or you are religious yes or no uh, it's 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 just in the mind mm -hmm. and um, the homeopathy is working on and there are some uh, 
very interesting people in history who uh, did develop uh, some theories about uh, the, the, the human being and uh, how the human being is functioning. And mm -hmm. how he did read about uh, these uh, philosophies uh, also. Mm -hmm. And there it starts. And then afterwards, Kent, it was a very important homeopath, mm. uh, he got in contact with Swedenborg. And I will talk about Swedenborg. He uh, is really talking about spirituality. And so Kent, he really introduced the uh, spiritual ideas of uh, Swedenborg in uh, the way of working as a homeopath. Yeah. And uh, the homeopathy is a science. It's a science based on uh, existing laws of nature. And laws of nature are not changing. They are there. The, the gravity law is there. It will never change. And so also the law of similars will never change. It's, it's a law of nature. Could and you could you explain the law of similars, please, to people who haven't come across it? We, we have many examples in, in, in nature, many, many. Uh, well, now here in Belgium for the moment, it's it's quite hot. And we will have some days uh, more than 30 degrees. And then uh, sometimes it's difficult to, to fall asleep in the evening. And people think uh, I should take a cold shower. But the best at that moment to do is to take a warm shower to treat hot, warm with warm. And uh, when your hands are frozen in, in the snow and it's very cold, we all have, uh, we, we, the, our uh, first reaction is to keep our hands uh, under warm water, but mm. the best is to keep it under cold, under cold water. So there are many, many, many uh, examples. You have the example oh. of the onion. When you are cutting the onion, your eyes uh, are, you, have the, you uh, get the tears in your eyes. So uh, when you have uh, onion in a homeopathic uh, 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 dynamization as an homeopathic remedy, it may help people who are, who have, who are suffering from allergies. Mm. Yeah, it's funny. I, I only read that last night. <laughs> I, was, I was looking for um, a little bit more information about a particular yeah. remedy and I came across that. That's yeah. so funny that you should say that. Um, can I ask, you're trained as a GP, as a general yes. practitioner, as a doctor, yes. and also a homeopath. Were you a doctor first? Is yes. So how, I, how, how did you get switched on to homeopathy? Because um, no, that's it, a journey, so. isn't it? It's not really switched off, it's complementary. Okay. So I'm uh, still practicing uh, conventional medicine, uh, school medicine, uh, every day. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when I take blood and I like to do an anal blood analysis, it's conventional yeah. medicine. When I uh, refer a patient to the x-ray, it's, it's mm -hmm. uh, conventional uh, uh, medicine. So, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, we are combining uh, the two uh, uh, possible ways of treating a person. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, I, I like and I appreciate uh, the uh, uh, school medicine mm -hmm. at the one uh, hand, but at the other hand, uh, there are many, many cases where you, you uh, are with your, yeah, we, we say in, in Flemish, with your back against the wall. We say that in English as well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you have no way out. And it's mostly because the patient falls between the the ship and the wall. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you cannot uh, have a, a, a right diagnosis. In, in, in school medicine, you need a diagnosis. It's only when you have a diagnosis, uh, you can start the treatment. Mm -hmm. eh? In homeopathic medicine, it's not necessary at all to have a diagnosis. Yeah. We are working with symptoms. Yeah. And that is what, what, uh, what uh, Swedenborg already said before Hahnemann really uh, uh, developed the idea of, of homeopathy, that we have first to have a look at the 
symptoms mm. uh, present before the illness manifests itself. Mm. Because when the illness manifests itself, it's already very far. Yeah. The solution, eh? So we, we have to detect the symptoms in the beginning. Mm. So in, in school medicine, when they discover a cancer, mm-hmm. uh, then uh, they are very worried about the fact or their metasis, yes or no. But we uh, say when you, you find already a cancer, in, in, in fact, the, the cancer is already the metastasis because yeah. it's, it started before. And there, homeopathy can do a lot. And especially when you can start homeopathy with children, it's, it's, it's terrific because children, they are in their energy. And then we are going again, the direction spirituality. You have mm. so many type of children and a children, a child is not hiding. A child yeah. shows his, <laughs> his, his, uh, his, uh, yeah, his, his character uh, without limits. Eh? Yeah. When a child is angry, uh, you hear it and see it. You will see it, or you mm. will not see it. It's possible, but mm. uh, a, a child is not coping as we are doing as adults. We mm. are coping, eh? so that's why it's so beautiful to 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 treat children and to start with children. Mm. And uh, yes, so and every symptom can can be important. A wart on the knee can be important. Uh, a wart uh, at the foot sole can be important, mm. or that the child is uh, sleeping uh, mm. very prominently in the uh, knee elbow position. Mm-hmm. Uh, even a child of two, three years old, that uh, is a very important symptom. We we right. uh, we can use it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. These are symptoms. For example, a child with bronchitis. Uh, medical doctor uh, in the school medicine or only trained in the school medicine will not be interested in the position of sleep of a yeah. child with bronchitis yes but we are interested mm. we are interested you can say during the fever a child has fe- has fever suffering from fever mm. 39 degrees normally you should suspect uh, during 39 degrees fever the child is thirsty Yes. But sometimes the child is not thirsty. Yes. So in that case, you can use the symptom thirstless fever during. Mm. And this is an abnormal symptom, a symptom you do not suspect. Or, for example, the child has even 40 degrees Celsius and uh, you, 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 you would suspect that the child will start perspiring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perspiring. Yes, and the child is completely dry, no sweat. Yeah. So then you use the symptom perspiration absent fever during. Yes. Or the child, 40 degrees uh, Celsius, uh, still is hungry. Mm. Normally, a child, 40 degrees Celsius, is not hungry. Yeah. But when the child is hungry during high fever, you can use the symptom appetite increased fever during. And so it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's a complete analysis about, mm-hmm. uh, about uh, the acute situation. And every symptom is important for us as homeopaths. Yeah. Um, I love what you've just described there because um, I guess with a school doctor or a, like a, a sort of you know traditional doctor that we all know and understand, you know, the idea of a doctor that sits in a little doctor surgery um, doing tests and things like that and prescribing, um, they would just be looking at the temperature um, yeah. and it yeah. would probably lead them down to one yeah. um, particular drug or um, medicine, whereas the homeopath, you've just described four different or five different options. Oh, according to many options. Yes, I know. I mean, yeah. um, um, one of the things I've learned as a mum, um, you know, raising my children whilst also liking um, homeopathy, obviously I don't know very much at all about it, but I'm very keen to learn. So whenever I talk to my homeopath, I'm always, um, you know, talking about my children as well. And I, I notice that he listens to everything. Um 
And and that's another big difference because doctors often are listening for just um, a couple of key things rather than the whole the whole um, personality or the tendencies of the child. And what I notice is when my children start behaving slightly differently, they're coming out of balance of something or they are going through something. And I start watching and, and listening. Um, and there's nearly always a correlation. Um, um, and then I think about my own past, like, Right now, my daughter's going through something um, and is saying, I'm scared. I'm scared. She's scared of everything at the moment and really clingy, like really wants to be on me, almost like she wants to climb in me. And she's five, you know. Killing her, the mother is a symptom we can use. It's in our repertory. Yeah. So it's a very important symptom. It could be borax. Borax yeah. when, uh, also are afraid of uh, uh, downward motion. Uh -huh. uh, borax children also may have uh, afti in the mouth. Afti? Uh, afti, uh, yeah, I don't know exactly the word in English. So okay. small spots on your tongue. Oh, right. Uh, and it's Not hurting right. a lot. Okay. Afti, afti or it's, it's a word in English, I think. But uh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, last, last week I had a child, high yeah. fever, and yeah. I did examine the child. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lungs were clear, mm -hmm. the ears, no problem. Mm -hmm. And I, I uh, took a look in the throat and the throat was completely inflamed. But yeah. the child was not complaining of throat age. That's interesting, so, isn't it? And I, mm -hmm. I, I knew directly the remedy I had to prescribe, uh, mm -hmm. namely Baptisia tinctoria, Baptisia tinctoria. And the, the fever was going on already two, three days. Oh. And I tried to prescribe a homeopathic remedy by phone, mm -hmm. but it didn't work. And I told the parents, it's better, I see the child. Yeah. So it's through examination mm. that I found that the child was suffering from inflammation of throat painless. Mm. It's very uncommon, inflammation of throat painless. And Baptisia cured the case in, in 12 hours. That's incredible. So it's, it's, yeah, that's, that's how we are working. Uh, but it's, uh, this, these are very acute uh, examples yeah. where the mind picture uh, is not so important. Mm. But in many cases, the mind picture, and then we, we go again, direction spirituality, mm. is very important. And why is homeopathy science? Because like I explained, as I explained already before, it's based on laws of the nature. So it's mm. science, it's an art of healing. Mm. It's interesting what you're saying about um, with cancer, for instance, with a cancer picture. You know, the, um, by the time it really reaches the doctor or the hospital, it's mm. because there's a lump, uh, yeah. you know, a lump or yeah. a growth somewhere. Okay. Mm. Uh, and when I first went to see a homeopath and had my first appointment, there was nothing wrong with me. I just wanted to um, connect with him. And, um, you know, he took my past. He was listening to all the things I was saying. And he just said, hmm, you're presenting with a carcinosinum. <laughs> like, you are, you are. Carc carcinosin. Is it carcinosin? Yes, yes. yes. He, he's very said, important remedy. Very important yeah, remedy. Yeah, really strong remedy. Oh, and he was saying, during the conference. Exactly. Um, so, you know, my belief systems, the way I was talking, the expectations I had of myself, how hard I was working, I was presenting with um, all of the, what's the word, like the, if I was going to carry on in that direction, yeah. already yeah. like becoming cancerous, I was going into that state. And so I would imagine that, um, you know, with homeopathy, you're actually curing things before they become a real problem. So that must be one of the difficulties yes. in getting recognized for doing stuff. Because like doctors, you know, you go to them when you have a problem and it looks like they're solving it. Whereas the approach with homeopathy is you, you get in as the body is going off course. You, yeah. you bring them back into alignment before the big problems occur. Yes. Um, and, exactly. and, I'm, and I'm very grateful for every homeopath on the planet. I really am because I think it's it's beautiful what you're doing. Are under pressure. <laughs> yes, yes. The, I mean, the school of medicine wants to to throw us uh, out of medicine. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, people who don't like uh, us and what we are doing. 
<laughs> yeah. So Reddit's uh, bodyguard is going about uh, also because uh, during uh, the the time I was writing in March uh, last year, uh, mm -hmm. I was uh, actually I was almost finished, but then the pandemic started, so yeah. I had to spend also a chapter at the pandemic from uh, March until September. So there is also a chapter about the pandemic and uh, with illustrated with some cases mm -hmm. uh, uh, about what homeopathy uh, can do in, in, in these cases. And uh, homeopathy can do a lot in pandemics. You can read it in Polygon. Yes. Well, I was just about to say, I was just about to say, I'd like a signed copy, please. I'm going to buy it when it's released. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so given the importance of stories and patterns, because, you know, every homeopath I've met is a, an observer, a very keen observer and listener. And you're very, very good at interpreting patterns, like recognizing patterns um, and working with them. Given what's happened in the world right now, um, there must be a lot of patterns coming up, like spiritual patterns mm -hmm. and sort of like um, a world um, personality or a few different fractured personalities are coming up. Do they correlate to any... Um, a any remedies are you like when you look at the world do you think right what the world needs now is a, a lot of this remedy at 200 c <laughs> or, you know like are you looking at the political events and thinking yeah, it depends it depends uh, what what we see now in the pandemic uh, that uh, many people are very anxious so oh. it's interesting to see how people react during uh, the uh, during a pandemic because uh you have people who are not worried at all and they are saying, oh, I'm not worried about the virus. Uh, other people uh, at the other extreme of the spectrum are uh, very, very uh, anxious. So yeah. we can use. So uh, when you talk about which remedy, it, it depends also a little bit of the, uh, of the uh, which wave of the pandemic uh, we are talking about. When we talk about the first wave, there were two homeopathic remedies. Ah, just, uh, Johanna, I bel jou terug. I bel jou terug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's my oldest patient. She is <laughs> 95 years old. That's incredible. <laughs> she uh, is mentioned also as a case in uh, Bodyguard. Wow. Uh, the Belladonna case. Mm -hmm. And this is an example of a case. She uh, had already surgery at the thyroid. Mm -hmm. She had already uh, an acute uh, infarct uh, of the heart. Uh, and uh, she takes not so much, but she takes some uh, uh, conventional medication. Mm -hmm. Still, she is reacting very good on homeopathy when necessary. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's beautiful. So in the first wave, in the beginning, a very important remedy was Bryonia, mm -hmm. Bryonia alba. Because uh, what did we see uh, at the beginning of the first wave? Uh, many people were very anxious about not uh, to have enough toilet paper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yeah, but that's true. In Belgium, it was, uh, it was in England. really <laughs> crazy to see it. <laughs> they were standing in a row uh, in the supermarket to get the toilet paper. Yeah. And that is what people always are doing when they are anxious about the future mm -hmm. and anxious about uh, uh, money matters uh, in the future. And at the other hand, during the first wave, we, have, we had symptoms of severe cough, uh, painful cough on the chest. And also people had the impression that the throat was really contracted uh, and they had the, sh the choking. And uh, this is also a, a typical uh, uh, symptom of bryonia. And here you have the mental symptoms of bryonia and you have the, uh, the general symptoms during the acute uh, situation of uh, COVID-19, mm. uh, people in the first stage. So, I had several patients uh, uh, reacting very good on bryonia. Another important remedy was arsenicum album. Yeah. Uh, arsenicum album, uh, these people are even more anxious. 
these people are wearing gloves. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, the mask are, is really covering the whole face. Yeah, <laughs> just a couple uh, of eyeballs. <laughs> they, they, they stay at home. They go to the home, the, 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 the windows, and they really uh, do not want to see anybody, to have no contact, and they are really, really very, very anxious. Mm -hmm. And they are also very chilly, very chilly. And they are very censorious to other people. They think uh, 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 are not following the, uh, the measures yeah. uh, imposed by the government. So mm -hmm. you only can meet uh, two people or you only are allowed to meet uh, four people. And then when they see that someone is meeting five people, then mm -hmm. uh, they, they will become very angry and they are very censorious, very censorious. Yeah. Yeah. And this is typical for Ars Arsenicum. So yes, uh, now in the, in the third wave, it was not, the picture was not so clear because in the third wave, you had more younger patients mm. and the symptoms were not so severe. So it, it and the symptoms were not yeah, coming up so, so clearly. So you had different kind of remedies. You had calcium, you had uh, baptisia, etc. About uh, the mind station, yes, um, the mind uh, st status, the mind uh, picture of the people in general. Yeah, we, we saw that uh, COVID should uh, uh, be the beginning of a change, mm. the way thinking of the people. Yeah. But I have the impression that it didn't change anything. <laughs> I, I think the people still want to go to uh, Mallorca or want to go to Ibiza uh, <laughs> with a very cheap flight of yeah. euros and want to drink beer over there. And uh, they, in general, people just go on the way they uh, were used to do before the pandemic. Mm. So, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit pessimist about, uh, pessimist, pessimist about uh, about uh, this uh, yeah this uh, change yeah. I, I i i i don't think it will change much the most the most people are just uh, longing for the vaccination and then they are free and it's also indicated at the vaccination centers the way to freedom yeah the way to freedom yeah uh, I mean, um, given given your training as um, a GP and also as a homeopath, um, I'm I'm guessing you see lots of different ways of freedom um, and uh, being healthy and coping with what life throws at you. Um, so uh, this is a kind of imaginary question, <laughs> and this is my last question actually, Leon. Because after that, I'd just like to ask you um, how people can buy your book. Mm -hmm. uh, and how you'd like people to contact you if they want to work with you. Um, so my imaginary question for you is, given the shock and the very strong feelings that humanity seems to have um, been going through in this last year, I mean, it, whether you believe in it or not, um, it, and whether you're a conspiracy theorist or not, it doesn't seem to matter. We've all gone through these really big peaks of of stress and shock and then anger and all sorts of things. Do you think there's going to be a much bigger picture on our health in say four years, five years, six years? Are we building up to um, a new kind of um, illness or weakness within us because yes. of the emotions that we're going through right now? Ah, also, also, also. Yes. I, I think there are many aspects uh, uh, we see, I, I see in my, my clinic uh, patients coming from outside, uh, patients who were not treated during the acute, acute stage with homeopathy, with post-COVID syndrome. So I, I think this will influence many, many, many people and not only on the uh, physical level, but also on the mental level. And mental level, what we see is that uh, 
many families and, and, and groups of friends, we see a split. We see yeah. a split uh, because of people are reacting on a different way uh, to the pandemic. Uh, it was already during the pandemic eh, about uh, the rules we had to follow. Eh? And now it's about the vaccination. Mm -hmm. eh? You have families where uh, 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 parents are saying to, uh, to the grandparents, to their parents, you are not allowed to see your grandchildren anymore when you are not vaccinated. Wow. It happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure there will be a society uh we have a, we had a society before covid-19 and we will have another society after covid-19 mm. uh, many people who lost uh, a loved one uh, and uh, in in very uh, tragic uh, situations uh, no possibility to say goodbye uh, so yeah i think a lot of grief a lot of grief will go on and and we will stay in people's mind so it it will be uh, it will be there it will uh, like we are saying in homeopathy it will an other it will be an other miasma yeah and we talk about it in bodyguard what it means miasma it's it's a kind of a, a layer mm -hmm. all of us we will uh, we will have over us yeah right? Uh, so we will all be covered a little bit with miasma of COVID-19 mm. because it will influence all of us. Is it yeah. not only uh, on the physical level, it will be on the mental level uh, also. Yes. Mm. So, yes, I really think it will uh, influence all of us. And it will influence humanity also, but uh, at the other hand, uh, I, I'm, I'm not so so optimistic. When when we talk about the environment and uh, the climate change, uh, etc., uh, and how we we can we can change uh, this and how we can uh, try to yeah to to make a better world, uh, I'm not so optimistic. When I see what's going on now, people are really yeah are really doing the same like they were doing before so uh, uh spend your holidays in your own country it's it's not done you have to go to turkey or you have to go to greece or you have to go to spain or even uh, you have to go to to south america uh, <laughs> otherwise uh, it's 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 not a good holiday mm. yes uh, yeah I, I i i don't know yeah Oh, no, uh, I, I, I hope so, but uh, I, I don't think so. That yeah. it will change a lot, but it will have an influence, I'm sure. Well, maybe I'll invite you back um, in, say, five years' time. <laughs> we can talk about the new miasm yeah. that we've got um, and, and what's happened. Um, so um, thank you so much for that, Leon. I really appreciate that. So if somebody that's listening today would like to buy your book, Bodyguard, um i'm i'm uh, just writing down here <laughs> this is will be my email address mm -hmm. and on on the site bodyguard uh you have uh, buy and then uh, you have uh, amazon amazon amazon.com mm -hmm. and there uh, it will be uh it will yeah th this will be until now the only possibility to buy it and mm -hmm. that depends from yeah when, when i see uh, the enthusiastic uh, reviews of uh, readers of the flemish uh, dutch version now i hope it will be it will have the same uh, uh same uh, i will receive the same reviews uh, from english speaking people and then maybe uh, we will uh, find other ways to uh, 
to to uh, offer the book to uh, readers but until now it's only amazon i'm sorry i'm sorry no, that's okay so well, when when's the, english, when's the english one um released is it released now it will it now the translation just finished today or tomorrow <laughs> and then uh, we have to to do the layout and then the print will start on monday and the print uh, will be finished normally in the first week of July. Yeah. And so uh, uh, normally uh, it will be available on Amazon.com uh, mm -hmm. to the 8th of July. Okay. So if you're July. listening to this and it's after the 8th of July, 2021, go straight to Amazon.com. If not, then just be a bit patient, put it in your diary, put a little note in your diary to check it out after the 8th of July. Um, so that's Bodyguard. And people, if they're English, they can read, um, they can go to your website, www.bodyguardls.be. Is that right? Exactly. And if um, somebody wanted to contact you to, um, you know, they'd like to talk with you or for you to work with them, how can they reach you? Send a mail to info at bodyguardls.be. Okay. I did, I did uh, chat. It's in the chat. Oh, excellent. I shall, I shall put that in. It's I'll make sure that goes onto the video. No problem. So info no. at bodyguardls.be. If there's okay. one final thought that you'd like to leave people with today, Leon, what would it be? Well, my, my, I, I hope that uh, homeopathic medicine will be really integrated in medicine. Uh, and that it, uh, we should create a, again the situation that was existing at the end of the 19th century in the USA, where 25% uh, of the medical doctors had followed a good education in homeopathy. Yeah. And uh, especially, I think, uh, in the future, we will have to face other uh, pandemics, <coughs> mm -hmm. especially in pandemics, homeopathy uh, can do a lot so yes uh, my hope is the integration the integration mm -hmm. so we need uh, school medicine uh, mm -hmm. that's what people uh, who did read already bodyguard are telling me your book is written in uh, with a full respect for the school medicine and i have the full respect for the school medicine mm -hmm. maybe tomorrow or the day after tomorrow i need the school medicine also yeah but uh, the, the, the one medicine does not exclude the other medicine. Yeah. It should I mean, be a story of inclusion. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, if I was to um, have an accident tomorrow, I'd be very grateful to be able to go to yeah. the hospital yeah. and have someone work on me. <laughs> I would still take Arnica. You know. at, the same time, at the same time, maybe it's good for you to take Arnica. Yes, <laughs> that's what I just said. <laughs> maybe have a hemorrhage. It's mm. good to take Annika or yes. when you have an uh, 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 injury at your eye, maybe it's uh, symphytum is good to take. Okay. Or when you, et cetera, you see, so it's, it's inclusion. And mm. now we have a situation of exclusion. Yes, absolutely. We are excluded. Yeah. We are excluded. Yes. Well, not in my household. Um, in my in my handbag, I have a little emergency homeopathy kit, which goes with me everywhere. And if the kids fall over and bang their heads, they come to me and they say, Mum, I need homeopathy. And I, I watch them and think, OK, I might take you to hospital, but I never need to. But anyway, um, it's been really lovely talking to you today, Leon. So thank you so much for your time. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Louisa. See you. Wow, what can I say? That was awesome. I really, really am so grateful. And I love the fact that we could, um, you know, explore the ideas of what happens next. So, you know, right now we know that, you know, homeopathy and, and you know, general practice medicine can be blended. Um, you know, as as we were saying, you know, if if I was to have an accident, I would definitely go to A and E if I needed if if I thought I'd broken a bone or something. But I would definitely be also taking Arnica um, en route to make sure that you know I find myself in the right state of mind for optimum healing. So this is really cool. Um, and given that illnesses tend to generate from the spiritual feelings and our feeling place and our states of minds right now. And it can take many years for them to develop. I, I love the fact that um, I was able to ask Leon 
what he thought about what would happen post COVID. You know, we've all gone through these massive spikes of emotions and, and we've had to feel all these emotions on so many different levels, anger, guilt, betrayal, fear, the fear of dying. We've, we've had to confront a lot of things and also poverty and all sorts of different things. So it's going to, it's going to have an effect, right? So, um, I, I'm kind of excited that it's going to create a new miasm or something a new level for us to explore. Um, it's it's part of our evolution and it will be marked there on a homeopathic level. So anyway, I hope that was interesting and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, you can reach out to Leon yourself if you want to reach him. It's info at bodyguardls.be. The BE, the BE is for Belgium. Um, you can also go to his website, which is www.bodyguardls.be. If you've enjoyed this show and you're enjoying um, the feel good conversations, then you can always just subscribe to my channel. It's Louisa Tanner Munson, or you can also contact me. It's Louisa at feelgoodastrology.com. Anyway, thanks so much for your precious time and love and support and comments and stuff. Um, I, I really um, love the fact that you've joined us today and I hope to see you again soon. Lots of love wherever you are in the world. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this conversation, then why not support today's guest at the Higher Self Expo in July 2021? The Higher Self Expo is a worldwide 24-hour event with 33 guest speakers who were all sharing their wisdom and exploring the connection between science and spirituality. To register your place and find out more, go to www.higherselfexpo.com.